about Atkinson, you talk about Webster, Chenille Thomas for Cavalier. Yep, and this is their starting lineup. Cavalier, Jadine White, of course, in goal. Melvin Doxley, Kamal Simpson, Courtney Allen, Ronaldo Webster, Richard King, Melanda Maxwell, Giovanni Leng, Kyle Ming, Colin Anderson, and Chenille Thomas, the starting lineup. They haven't changed pretty much from what they played, the 3 4 2 1 system. And Doxley, who has been employed in the middle of the park, has really laid the foundation for the attacking players to do their thing. Akil Clark is in goal for Mount Pleasant. In front of him, Latroy Leng, Tajay Anderson, Liston James, Kevin Lane, Kevon Isaacs as they play five at the back, Alwyn Harvey, Daniel Green, Jordan Fletcher, Kemar Beckford will be behind Keslon Hall. From Daniel Green down all the way to Keslon Hall, these are players who can turn this game for Mount Pleasant. Jordan Fisher getting his first start. The Jamaica Premier League powered by Digital continues here at the UEJFF Captain Horace Burrell Center of Excellence for Cavalier and Mount Pleasant who will do battle as a playoff spot. The fights for the playoff spots continue in the number 27 in the past but now is where the number 8 has. We're on the way here for Cavalier against Mount Pleasant and it is Mount Pleasant will have first crack of the possession. Didn't last too long but uh, Trying to get on the end of that one, Latroy Leng. And he was fouled in the process by the other Leng. No relation, Giovanni Leng. I didn't play like any relation there. <laughs> <laughs> Probably would have been lost to brothers based on the challenge. <laughs> yes. But a big, big miss for Mount Pleasant, and uh, showed the last time around they were without the deal. Richie has been solid for them at the back. I feel only if necessary he will come into this one. Too much on it for Jordan Fletcher. We see this time around, Coach Speed there, he has kept Atkinson on the bench. Last game, he, he kept both Atkinson and Webster on the bench and brought them on to good effect. Just always trying to keep one of his jump cards um, up his sleeve to be able to unleash later on in the game. As we're saying, we're seeing signs of maturity from players and even their technical team trying to not just put players out there and, and look for the win, but to try and mix things up. Coach Downs there, he knows that he has a big game on his hands today loss for him could see them slipping down to sixth and just on the edge of the top six and being installed at preseason favorites you feel pressure is on them to really make sure that they solidify their position in this top six good take of the strike Jordan Fletcher goes into another gear. He's looking for the foul on that occasion. Not a bad first touch as he goes wide. Webster fires it across. It's a big chance here that was charged down. Shot coming in from Marlando Maxwell. I just felt he took a, a, a bit too long to, to get his shot off. And just his first touch, I think the, the ball just was under his feet trying to get it out. It's amazing how Cavalier, they've managed to scoop up some of the best youngsters over the past few years. I've known Marlando Maxwell for quite some time. He was with the National Under-15 program. And uh, really a, a, a star out of the parish of Manchester. Maxwell yeah they it's 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 what they do Cavalier last game they had 
Christopher Ainsworth and Cleo Clark, 15 and 16 years old respectively in their starting lineup. Not that they look like they were ready for the level, but I guess it's a part of their development. But you're right, Donald, uh, they're not afraid to, to get these young talents and, and expose them at, at this level. It will be quite some story if they manage to win the league with this set. And, and, and good you say that because a lot of persons have been saying Cavalier has not been really interested in winning the league just to get developed young players and move them on. But you get the feel that they, they, they feel that this time around with the all that has gone on leading into the season and how closely matched the teams are, it's as good a time as any for them to possibly win the, the, the league. And with these young players, it will really go a far way to help their confidence. And these youngsters have belief. I see something different in, in them this year as there's Fletcher who has a lot of belief in himself couldn't keep that one inside though and it's going to be a goal kick to Cavalier yeah so yeah you feel that yeah they're, they're really pushing for for that and, and, and a win today would take them top um, albeit a game more than uh, current leaders there but for, for sure I feel they're going to push for that today and we talk about the young players too, Donald, and, and, and their attacking impetus. But oh, they give it up in a dangerous area. Couldn't quite control that one. Bushy Beckford, Kemar Bushy Beckford. It's a dangerous customer, the number 10 for Mount Pleasant. Yeah, you know what he can do. He'll go scoring machine. Harvey. Isaacs. Anderson, Kesslund Hall, oh, we still see missing from the Mount Pleasant lineup or squad here in terms of delivered inside and handled there at the back by Giovanni Leng, would have missed the first stage of the season. But he has come into the Cavalier setup and has settled. Mount Pleasant, though, trying to make this advantage count. It's with Fletcher. Shot charged down. Now it's with Beckford. Beckford playing it across, and no problems there at the back for Cavalier. And we can see what Mount Pleasant is doing here, looking to, to pin. Uh, Cavalier back. And their back line is over the halfway line, Mount Pleasant. Cavalier can't find the out ball at all. Cavalier used to their lightning start. I think Mount Pleasant trying to suppress that. Taji Anderson. Daniel Green on it. That Daniel Green is a player that I, I like since seeing him in this league. He can really turn a game. Beckford. You, Beckford. Nice feed out from the back. It's Ronaldo Webster. Can make a run. Takes the long route. Skips by one. Cutting inside. And again. Oh, that wasn't the best pass. I think he was probably in a couple of minds as to who he wanted to pass, pass the ball to. Now here is Fletcher. Being pressured all the time by Kamoy Simpson, the Cavalier skipper. Fletcher. Leng. Easily headed away. This is Courtney Allen. Allen cutting inside. 
then his shot is charged down. Was looking for that additional yard of space which he didn't quite receive. Fletcher again. Keslon Hall on it. Not afraid to restart proceedings, Mount Pleasant. Yeah, I think they have to do that because Cavalier is making it difficult for them. You see 11 players behind the ball. When you get that, then spaces are limited. What you have to do is to play back and, and trigger a press from this Cavalier team, which will open up space behind those pressing players. So for Cavalier remaining disciplined, all 11 players behind the ball. Ball delivered inside, headed away. Leng. Has some space to work with now. Daniel Green. Green fires that one wide of the mark. And, uh, JD White skipping across. Didn't seem to be in any danger. Yeah, Daniel Green at any moment he, he can turn into a live wire. It's not shy of shooting nor uh, shy of dribbling, dribbling the ball. So not surprised to see him looking to, to try his luck from, from distance. And. Um, not bad effort, dear. White was interested, wasn't too far off. So, lively player there. So, not a bad start to the game from Cavalier and Mount Pleasant. Although for Mount Pleasant, they've had the majority of the possession so far. Even if there isn't a lot of goal mouth activity. Simpson in particular has been kept busy at the back <laughs> for Cavalier. But they've had the possession in good areas of the pitch, but really not creating much opportunities from it. And that is because a Cavalier, they have put numbers behind the ball and they've seek to block those half spaces and and not allowing much space in behind the back line for players to run into so you you have possession in there you're looking for runners but not they don't have space to run into so just showing some as i said maturity this cavalier team and not all about going forward well here's cavalier all about going forward now but that was probably the worst possible pass that could have been provided there from the right hand side and I guess they can afford, based on the nature of the team, to sit deep and, and be behind the ball because they're very youthful and energetic, so they can break at pace, much with the likes of uh, Webster and, and Maxwell. Beckford. Green. Late challenge there coming in from Webster. Kevon Isaacs listed as one of three centre backs for Mount Pleasant, but uh, we're used to him playing in the holding midfield role and no surprise he's playing in front of the other two centre backs. Yeah, there's some changes to to the back line there. We had young Christie who is normally employed in there for Mount Pleasant. 
not in it today, Prince Christie. Ball played over the top. It's a foot race there. Thomas just winning it. But that's pretty much it. He stays down after colliding with the advertising boards. And I think there was a hefty collision there. It was Maxwell there. Ooh. Yeah, and his, his shin. Maybe his shin guard would have cushioned or eased off some of that. He probably would have missed the shin guard, you know. I think it probably was above the shin guard. Yeah, like the right of that, it could be, it should be very painful or could be very painful. But you're right, he could have missed it as we have another look here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little below Just the knee. It. Yeah. Yeah, that would be pain. That will be painful. That would be nothing but bone there. He got a cut as well. Let's hope he's he's okay, or he will be, to continue at least. Down to ten players at the moment. Cavalier as Mount Pleasant seeking to press. We know Kevin Isaacs can take the shot from distance too. Yeah, I was looking to do that, um, but I'm pretty sure. Cavalier won't mind if they limit if they limit Mount Pleasant two shots from distance. Not the best clearance. It's Webster or Jordan Fletcher rather with the effort. Fantastic strike on his left. Took it down so superbly, and there was absolutely nothing Jaden White could have done about that one. Yeah, I think it was a poor defensive header to start with. I think he had time at the back post and probably just headed into the part of Fletcher. And once it came down to him on the off volley, off volley, well, he put it down on the turf and then he struck it well with that left foot and definitely out of the reach of White. It's never going to get there at full stretch and needed more of his body to get across and couldn't shuffle across in time. And Fletcher vindicating his first start of the season with a superb strike and I think on the run of play it has all been more pleasant in the attacking third and rewarded with this high press first start for Mount Pleasant and he has rewarded his coach with a goal Jordan Fletcher one of the top young talents of the last few years Seeking to make his transition from Cornell College to the senior level a smooth one. Really was a standout in Montego Bay for his high school team. And just a glimpse of the magic he holds with that strike. Yes, yeah, certainly a talented kid. And like I said, it's just been frustrating for a lot of his fans that he has not been able to play a lot more. And has been disciplined with his fitness levels. Cavaliers down a goal and still down a player. As we see Maxwell still on the sideline looking to come on. It's good to see that he's back up and looking as if he'll be able to continue. Thomas, yeah, Shanil Thomas. He's getting ready to come back in as here's a, another effort that was charged down here's Leng Fletcher Simpson couldn't quite gather Harvey collects Leng. Lane playing it to Harvey. Harvey trying to thread that ball through. Daniel. 
green. Hall couldn't quite gather. This is Webster. Playing it across well. Not the best first touch though. Yeah, I think that's a letdown for all the work that Webster did. On that occasion, his teammate really didn't do his work justice. That was Courtney Allen, who had a heavy first touch. But the pace of the game also is suiting Mount Pleasant. I think they have dictated the pace of this game very well. Cavalier, they do like to play at an electric pace, but Mount Pleasant really controlling the possession and the tempo. Really not allowing Cavalier to impose their normal game playing style. Really can't get out of defense, this Cavalier team pegged back fully. So much so that when they break, not being able to have the quiet numbers they need up front. And Thomas back on the field. Seen even above the knee, Donald. Maybe so. Harvey now. Cavalier conceded when they were down to 10 players with Thomas off the field. Mount Pleasant capitalizing on their numerical advantage. Daniel Green now on the right. One thing about Mount Pleasant, they are going to be patient in their build-up. Isaacs. And with the goal, they can continue to play the way they are playing patient and, and slow in their build-up because they're ahead. And it is Cavalier who needs to chase the game. Oh, nice first touch from Green. Over there at the back post in blue. Fletcher. It's just a matter of keep ball. It's almost like a, a, a practice session. Uh, you just have each, a, a team just looking to keep possession. Harvey lost possession. Simpson picked it up. Couldn't quite set Courtney Allen free. You see that so often with teams when they're out of possession for long periods, once they regain it, just don't have that composure to try and pick the right passes and, and build up the play. They get into this rush to go forward and lose possession. Exactly. So, you know, it's it's working in Mount Pleasant favour in many, many respects. Almost went through. Mount Pleasant dominating the possession at 72%. And, and for, for the most part, it's good possession because, like I said, in the early part where they would have rackled up that a large chunk of that possession, as you see Fletcher here just inadvertently clipped. That's a good move by him. He came sharp today and would have been buoyed by that goal. It has gone all the way through. The flag stays down. Green rushing the shot. Oh, they've given up possession too easily, Cavalier. 
I think what's going to be important for Cavalier here. They're going to have to get players like Doxley on the ball. He has been employed in a defensive midfield role for the last few games and he has done a good job. He has provided the platform for the attacking players to go and do their stuff. He needs to get on the ball a lot more. They need to put him on the ball a lot more and then he could dictate the play. But first they have to get the ball in. Eh? Yeah, they do. Cavalier, they seem to have been rattled, but they are a group of youngsters after all. That's the commission the infringement there on Anderson. Yeah, a group of youngsters and they're going to have to learn to unlock different challenges as they're faced with them and this may just be a challenge that they're not used to being faced with in this particular manner and the fact that the early goal came that compounded the situation but as we said Doxley there he's he's a man who can really bring them back into this game and he's going to have to impose himself on the contest Fletcher Beckford does well. Green sold short by Beckford, but still with Mount Pleasant. Lang with the throw. You wonder there with Maxwell, he just. Green losing it. Stabbed forward by Colin Anderson. What has well it didn't go out in the touch actually. Still with Mount Pleasant. It's all Mount Pleasant at the moment, it really is. Yeah, it's not an understatement at all. Oh Harvey does well. And then he slipped. Thomas with the turn and the pass. Courtney Allen now with some space to work with. Almost got through to Chanil Thomas. And then the challenge coming in from Webster on Isaacs. You feel Cavalier just need a, a segment of possession just to get a feel of the football even if it's not going forward just to get a sequence of passes going together build themselves again coach downs he would have been pleased with what he's seen i'm not quite sure he would have come into this one expecting such dominance in this opening 27 minutes it's certainly going well for him Oh, that's a wonderful ball over the top. Beckford trying to stab that inside. There was a deflection, a couple of deflections. And guided it to J.D. White in goal for Cavalier. Yeah, for a moment there, I wonder if Richards, Richards King decision to leave it alone would have been punished by Hall. But always kept under pressure. Sloppy. Yeah, it really has been when they're in possession, Cavalier. Coates P there has a lot of issues to deal with. But I think he has to start with them just getting a hold of the football. They're being asked to press now to hurry Mount Pleasant into making those passes. Really has been slug looking sluggish this game so far in the game, Maxwell. 
even the second best when he goes for 50-50 challenges. Should be used to these chilly conditions though. <laughs> Being from Manchester and all, our side flag goes up. Maybe he's been away too long. Yeah, there, there's that. <laughs> but, but for sure, yeah, he is, he's, he's been poor so far. I just need to get a grip of himself. Sometimes all you have to do is just to go back to the basic. No fancy flicks or tricks. Just play the simple pass you see in possession. Don't try to play the high risk passes. Daniel Thomas, he looks lender, but he's strong, you know. Here's Simpson. Simpson should have done much better than that. Yeah, again, just forcing the, the pass. Trying to make that final pass from too deep. Doxley goes long. That's booted into touch. So they're in the attacking third, Cavalier with the throw. Finally, <laughs> just not Chris do with their pa with their touches because that pass just now into Henderson should have been dealt with much better. Simpson heading to the byline, goes to the turf. And there's going to be a goal kick. He's losing his balance there. Exactly, and I, I get the feel too that if it continues and it stays like this at halftime, I'm, I'm pretty sure... Uh, at the start of the second half, we'll see the, the inclusion or introduction of Dwayne Atkinson off the bench. Because right now it just seems toothless from Cavalier. Here's Mount Pleasant, flooding players. Fletcher couldn't quite get a hold of it. Still a chance here, buried by Beckford. They are on the hunt, and Bushy Beckford is now on the score sheet. Jaden White beaten again, and Mount Pleasant with a 2 0 lead over Cavalier. And you felt the chance had gone uh, from Beckford, from from Fletcher when he got the, the ball played into him just had a heavy touch and it ran away from him and you felt that chance would have gone again it was Daniel Green who played it inside to Fletcher that touch there second touch just seemed to have gotten away from him but inadvertently got back to him from Doxley and then he played in Beckford and Beckford a clinical finisher he is going away from White all the time there was no chance for White on that one you had to rush him there he was inside the box, but the defenders were just backing off, hoping to simply block the shot. And what you get when you give good players time and space, you end up with quality. That's what time and space equals. And on that occasion, Beckford delivered quality. And Mount Pleasant, two goes to the good. And you feel, I spoke about half-time for the likes of Atkinson and others maybe, there might be changes imminent in this first half for, for Cavalier because players on the park just don't seem to be up to the, the races today. Leng Harvey Two point in front of hole That was Second goal this season For Kemar Bushy Beckford and You don't want him to get into A, a goal scoring streak If you are not a more pleasant player. We spoke about Green being able to make impact. And he just did. Not credited with the assist, but certainly was heavy in the build up. Right on cue, Donald. We see Atkinson looking to come into this game. He has a change paper, it seems, in his hand. Hey, 
Well, the change is imminent. First half change just to just to tweak things early. Yeah, I, I did say it. If, if, if it was at one and going into halftime, you feel he would have started right away for the second half. But once the second goal went in, I suggested it would happen in the first half, and we're going to see it. But it's a free kick for Cavalier. That's not a bad looking one, you know. A big chance. It's wide of the mark from Leng. Giovanni Leng inside the area couldn't guide that goalwards. That was a big, big chance for Leng. Had to hit the target. Really had to hit the target. He had the time. And after that touch there, just hit across it. Really needed to hit through with the laces, but it just went across it. It was always going to spoon away. Cavalier we see here. It's Colin Anderson who has been taken out. Yeah, a bit surprising there, but right attacking wing back. Maybe they're looking to effect some well, I don't think there's gonna be a structural change with that, but I think I thought Maxwell was was the poorest on the field. But a big chance missed by Ling. That would have been good for Atkinson coming on. And just with that goal, we know what a goal does to team. Give them a lift. And with him coming on, could just capitalize on that lift. But opportunity missed. Dwayne Atkinson on the park, has to do a job on the right hand side. He's a speedy, tricky player, Dwayne Atkinson. And worked very well with Bernardo Webster. Do you notice a, a change in shape? I have seen that. For Cavalier? Yes, with Doxley, he's been dropped also into. He's, he's now playing in a central defensive role. It appears as well. But they, they normally play with the three at the back. But what we've, we've, we've seen from them here now is it's a change in, in terms of personnel. I wonder if it's a 4-4-2 formation that they've, We're looking. they've gone to. Webster calling for it, didn't quite get it. Simpson is back there. Thus, I think they're just trying to get a grip of the game in the middle of the park. Yes, it, it would appear. Definitely a, a change in trying to get deeper players prevent this Mount Pleasant team from having the runners wide of the area. That the, the second goal did come from a ball from Green down their left channel. So I think the change to four at the back 
is to try and mitigate against those plays from Mount Pleasant. Doxley looking to, to partner King at the back, taking responsibility on Beckford Doxley. as well Anderson looking for Hall Richard King just making sure so at the moment Mount Pleasant they're in second spot just behind on goal difference behind Bear United Cavalier they are on 12 points and they are in fifth position Ball delivered inside the area. Ooh, just over the top. Beckford was saying that maybe he could have gotten onto that one. Just ahead from from Lane. Bedford felt he was in poor position for it, but it wasn't a bad header in the end. Yep, Kevin Lane reaching that one. Still we see from, from Cavalier, yes, definitely it looks like a 4-3-3 now. So the playoffs as it stands, we'll see Portmore against Harbourview, Dunn Beholden against Cavalier. Going to the fact that the two top teams would automatically go to the semis. Indeed, four teams will be playing for the two semi final spots. Cavalier, of course, if they came out on top in this one, they would go right to the top of the table. And that still can happen. But there's a long way, they're a long way away, not only on the scoreline, but on the passage of play. And just now, we saw um, Mount Pleasant looking to switch the point of attack, but because of the change of shape from Cavalier, they were deterred from doing so. Beckford, oh, that's a lovely ball inside. And, uh, well, the flag has gone off for offside against Hall anyway. Hall was trying to feed Green, who was making that run. But Hall himself didn't time his run. Yeah. Tajay Hall, who is the left back for, for Mount Pleasant, likes to go forward and was on his bike. But because of the deep line, right back now for Cavalier. That pass was thwarted. Ball played to Hall. Green making a run. Ball was played behind him. Len committing the foul. Free kick to Cavalier. And despite Len committing that foul, it just seems as if Cavalier, they are just playing in slow mode. The, the pace of their movement and the alertness of the players on the ball, just not up to par today. Ball over the top, looking for Webster, but uh, Akil Clark, who has had a, the most boring of days, managed to get a touch on the ball. I don't think he has had a shot on target. Oh. A shot to speak of from Cavalier. It's just too easy for Mount Pleasant at the moment. But still you feel that the defensive line for Cavalier just a little too deep. Maybe they can just push up a little bit more and, and restrict Mount Pleasant of space to do that pass in game. I mean, I'm pretty sure Doxley and King would back themselves against Fletcher 
and Beckford in a foot race. So they can push up a little bit more, change of shades and possibly a change of tactics as well from them in terms of trying to press up high up the park. It's just two nil down and really have nothing to lose. Atkinson feeding it out wide. And, uh, needed a bit of service at that. There's Hole. Hole inside the area. And, uh, he's driving into touch. Well, all just needed to find a ball to Fletcher at the far post. He was unmarked and there was not a, a, a runner tracking back to try and put him under any pressure. So, had all been able to get a ball to that far post, it would have been an easy tapping for Jordan Fletcher. Doxley, though, did really well. Yeah, he did well to ensure that that pass never came. It's with Beckford. And again, Donald giving him a lot of time to execute his shot. With the time he really should have done a little better, a bit, little bit better than that. But uh, of the mark, he's already scored once today. Beckford. Of course, the second goal in three matches for Kemar Bushy Beckford. Yes, went four games without scoring and only felt for his by his standard that was a, a huge goal drought. Thomas. Oh, that's really well done from Shadil Thomas. Thomas was never close enough to receive that pass and that pass needed to have been delayed. Leng wins it back. Finding Thomas, back to Leng. The challenge coming in, I had to. Listen, James coming across. There's a firm challenge from James. A pass from Thomas just invited the challenge from James and he didn't hesitate. How as if Thomas was turning the favour what Leng tried to do previously, but at least it was a better ball. Here's a corner kick. That's not a bad one for Thomas. And at the back post, Cavalier, they still have it. Lofted inside the area, headed down and in. Shanil Thomas pulls one back for Cavalier. He rose highest inside the box. And Cavalier on the stroke of half time. They're back in this one. Thanks to Shanil Thomas. Well, he came off the park. He was off the park when they conceded the first goal. But such an important player he is. He's back on the park, a fighter. He spoke about his strength as well. But the ball came in from Atkins, Atkinson. But give Cavalier credit. They kept it alive. It almost went out for a goal kick. And it was kept in by... Doxley, I felt, well, the second ball was won by Doxley. He played it back into the mix zone and uh, Thomas really got on the end of it. And uh, that was definitely what Cavalier would have wanted going into the halftime break. They would have rather go in level, but one goal in it is much better than two goals down. Back to the UEJFF Captain Horace Burrell Center of Excellence as uh, Cavalier and Mount Pleasant 
will resume battle. Second half will get on the way shortly. And Mount Pleasant with the advantage 2 1 at the halftime interval. They're actually leading by two goals to nil. Then Cavalier got a goal back on the stroke of half time. And this game is all of a sudden Dwight Jeremiah interestingly poised. Second half is on the way. Cavalier, of course, in the white and black. Mount Pleasant in the blue and white. And Cavalier having gotten that goal on the stroke of half time. The question will be for them how will they continue? Will the momentum still be with them? Webster looking for something, didn't get it. Ball played on the edge of the box. Ming on the end of this one pulls it across. Looking for Webster. Couldn't quite get there. Fletcher lost it. Leng looking for the one two. Oh, in the side netting. Giovanni Leng. It was teed up perfectly for the defender. And he found the side netting. That, that would have been glorious though if it had scored. It would have been, and it probably would have been his second goal had he taken the first chance, which was good. Uh, it was a good opportunity in the first half. But I don't know. Why the right foot though? Yeah, but if he had gone for the using the the right, he would have had to open his body and more go with the inside of the foot than the instep there. So the toe fork is what he went for, but the inside of the right foot opening his body up and going for the far corner would have been a better option. And more control on that play. Uh, toe poke has not really much control, you just get good speed on it. <laughs> but I guess they won't be too hard on him. We didn't see them making a big thing about it because he's normally used to playing in his penalty box, defending his goal. But my take as a coach is once you've made your way in the attacking third and in the, the, the penalty area in the opposition half, you are a striker. And let's be, let's be fair, he has done that so many times for Camper Down when he was playing in the Manic Cup competition. So he can do it much yeah. better than what yeah, he, he has can. shown. Most definitely. Webster, struggling a little, may need some attention on the bench, from off the bench, and well, it was just a step on his toe there. I say just, but it's, it's actually quite, <laughs> it's actually quite painful. <laughs> Thomas was fouled by Harvey who was having none of it <laughs> not at all <laughs> not going to allow himself to be trimmed by that just to keep his long here in time um, Thomas had had a, a, other, other ideas he's a player who likes to to dish it out so they say if you give it you should be able to take it yeah, didn't show that he was able to take it on that occasion so you could still didn't have some work to do ball sent inside the area with the bad delivery from Malanda Maxwell free kick to Mount Pleasant Simpson I believe was the aggressor there Punted long. Cavalier able to handle it, but then they lost it. So Mount Pleasant will try and recycle. Or we'll keep this one in play. It's going to be a corner kick. Yep. But 
certainly it's it's more looking like a contest now and the, since the start of the second half i think cavalier with their change of shape as i said with more purpose and looking to press further up here's the delivery inside anderson firing it into the crowd but he met it well yeah he's gonna have difficulty going through all that crowd but he did meet it well Here is Green. Keslan Hall is there. With the Beckford stretching to get that one. Yeah, might have just tweaked some a muscle. But I think that ball played inside. When it got to the center of the goal, it was at its furthest point, which was where Hall was. And that caused him not to get on the end of it. Ball played inside. Ooh. The goalkeeper actually collected that one low. Yeah, Seven short ball. <laughs> he had to come to, you felt if he wasn't there, Atkinson would have taken it down and had a, a blast at goal. Cavalier more of a, a threat. And now we see them forcing Mount Pleasant into errors. Green on that occasion. <laughs> Atkinson was looking for the foul against him. As far as, the weather, as far as the weather conditions go, we're back to normal. Not a strong breeze. Still overcast. Cool conditions. Still favourable for the players. Yeah, cool condition. Not the, not pouring rain. So they will like it. They wouldn't mind if every time they venture to this venue, it is this type of condition. But still, I think uh, Cavalier is playing at a pace below the level that would trouble this more pleasant team. Here's a chance. Keeper is there, though. Sharp. Collecting. Atkinson nibbling at the the heels of Kevon Isaacs. Here's Beckford now, score of the second goal for Mount Pleasant. Cavalier needs to find a way to hurry Mount Pleasant passing. James making his run though forward. That's what I was saying, that they just need to press more and when they're on the ball too, to move it quicker. Hall collects. Isaacs. He's never going to trouble. Three goals stocks on, stock on top of each other. But if, if, if Cavalier can limit them to shots from distance, I think that would be a comforting situation. And the fact that Doxley has been pushed back into the central defensive role, he's gotten on the ball a lot more as well, and he's been more influential. He was the one who played the ball back to the mix zone for Thomas to get on to give them their... Oh, Simpson has lost it. Tommy! And White had to make the save. Yeah, poor from Simpson there, and once he lost it, Harvey had no hesitation in what he was going to do. 
White was alert. Harvey was sharp. Good all round football. Yeah, he was an instinctive shot there. I was seeing how White hasn't had to make a spectacular save so far. I was thinking it. But then the shot came in from Harvey and he had to make his first save of the game. Corner kick to Mount Pleasant. In the near mind, it's a commentator's curse. Well, that's not a bad delivery at all. At the near post, headed away though. Shaniel Thomas looking for an outlet. And the give and go. Does he have the speed to get there? Yeah, a better quality there. That's what you want from them. A faster break. Just more quality with it. Maybe if they could have gotten it under control much better than they could have switched the point of attack. Thomas really battered and bruised in his collision with the billboard. But a fighter is he? Yeah, he is a fighter. He's off the field for the time being for Cavalier. Last the last time he was <laughs> <laughs> thinking it straight. The last time he was off it, they conceded. He Cavalier would want to get him back on as quick as possible. <laughs> I mean, we're near the United Bowl track centre there. Don't want Lightning to strike twice in the same place. There you go. There you go. They do have the possession though. And he's back on the park. Almost came across. Ran out of space, did he? Yeah, definitely did. Yeah, Doxley. Hearing from the touchline that the reason Shavon Sean Paul came in for a kill clock. Clark was actually feeling dizzy in the first half. He was bored to the point of dizziness, apparently, because he didn't do a lot in that first half. No. Maybe White, after effecting that save, suffering from cramp, or might have landed awkwardly. But we see Atkinson there and Maxwell trying to plan how they'll get back into this one. Fletcher in buoyant move, having gotten his first goal. And what a strike it was. Yeah, a beautiful strike, I think. That's the uh, pick of the bun so far. And then setting up one for Kemar Beckford. Yeah, a good strike nonetheless too. I mean, not far behind. A well placed as well. White didn't even move. That's how good the strike was. And then on the stroke of halftime, to Shanil Thomas at the back post, the service from Doxley. Yeah, Doxley did well. Just put it in the mix zone and said to his players, go ahead, get on the end of that one. Thomas obliged. They're still training. Cavalier. But as it stands, it would be in fifth position. Mount Pleasant would be joint top of the table, just behind a goal difference. Harvey Anderson, Isaacs back to Harvey, James playing around with this. Mount Pleasant taking their time with the possession. Isaacs. Delightful ball almost to Beckford who was making that run inside the box. Yeah, Beckford, wily, experienced customer who knows his way around the park. Decent run in the box, almost got on the blind side of the defender. Well, that's a wonderful take and he was fouled in the process from Anderson and the yellow card is going to come out. Yeah, that's a clear yellow card. <laughs> what a take that was though from Dwayne Atkinson though in trying to beat Anderson. 
you know, what we saw in the first half, as we see here, Anderson, second best to Atkinson, having to bring him down. In the first half, he was going in the opposite direction most of the time for Mount Pleasant. But with the introduction of Atkinson, he's been having to do a lot of tracking back. Just to confirm the yellow card to Tajay Anderson. Free kick sent inside the area, headed away. Paul trying to tee up Fletcher. Ball spread wide. And, uh, they wanted to have done better with that, Kyle Ming. Delivered inside, and the header is over the top from Ronaldo Webster. If there's one player that you want to be on the end of a, a ball played into the box, a cross is it's Webster. Very good header of the football. Just about to say that he. He was operating too deep, but he was the one who sprayed the ball wide and then made the run into the box. So good all-round play from him. They would have wanted to do better with his header, but you don't want to give him much chances with the header. Oh, again, given up. And it is Maxwell. Simpson wins it. Needed a better dis distribution there. Harvey, Beckford. Green. <laughs> Nonchalant, isn't he? Yeah. Harvey, Isaacs is there. still think too that Cavalier are not really hurrying on Bland as much as they need to. Oh, I come Mount Pleasant is, is, is who Cavaliers are playing. Uh, maybe I'm stuck in the first game that I did here. But yes, you, you feel like uh, Mount Pleasant, they're, they're just having their way in this one too, too much. Even when it gets into the uh, defensive third for Cavalier. They seem to just allow Mount Pleasant a lot of time and space. I can understand if they're they're sitting in a low block, but once it gets into that defensive area, you feel that there has to be more purpose from Cavalier. Back to Ming. Nice ball inside. Yeah, that, that wasn't necessary from Thomas. Thomas there just giving them a free outlet, had the opportunity to still just apply pressure and force yeah. them into errors. But once you commit the infringement, it's just a free pass out. Ball well, given up. Simpson collects. Atkinson on it. Both teams making mistakes here in the second half. And need a team willing to up the tempo. Whip 
Phillips had done really well there and then he was fouled. Yeah, he did well initially. Um, didn't give up the chase at all. James trying to shield him out, just kept it in. I felt he should have been given. And I think he got the the, the, the call. Lamont Rochester has come on for Cavalier. One Manchester High player in for the next for Cavalier. And Orlando Maxwell is off the park. Courtney Allen is also off for Cavalier. This one delivered. And it's headed away. Here is Hall. Hall sends it over on the right hand side. It's with Fletcher. Poor first touch. And couldn't do a lot with the second. Yeah, seems to have overrun it there, Fletcher. And once that occurred, then the opportunity was gone. They should get it around the corner, Cavalier. That's Jaboy Topi in the proceedings now, replacing Courtney Allen. <laughs> Fletcher getting some attention. Would have been disappointed with the first touch here. And then trying to play Daniel Green. So, second corner kick to Cavalier. Two corners in quick succession. Number of players inside the box. Seven players for Cavalier inside the area. The referee. Ready. This one at the back post and Sean Paul got a proper punch. Was there a handle ball there inside the box? Oh, wonderful stuff. And trying to tee up a teammate. Rochester. There's a whistle on the play. And it's going to be a free kick. Don't think there was a lot in this. I think he held it down. I think his hand was actually involved. Yeah, probably came off his head to his hand. So that occasion, then the referee was never going to to call that one, but it was it was a beautiful footwork we saw, I think it's from Courtney Allen. Oh, that's Ming actually. Or Ming. King, King, sorry, King. King. Richard King. From McLaren College skipper. Oh. Or defender rather. Didn't look like a defender there. <laughs> no, no, he didn't. <laughs> certainly show good footwork and i like that in 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 in, in defenders being able to have good ball mastery skills he was a part of the winning squad captained by earl simpson who is at arnick gardens now Ming delivers. No problems there for Sean Paul. 
He was lackadaisical there, lost out. I, I, I think he felt he was in the opposition penalty area, which was he had done before, but yeah, just invited the back hall into that right hall. To, he had the, the beating of hall. I think the point of kick has, in fact, been given. Yeah, to the dismay of Cavalier players. But he thought for a moment there that last touch came off a Mount Pleasant player. And Leng will want to ensure that this one does not go in. Dinked at the near, dinked at the near post. Anderson. Green. Fletcher. Harvey. Green. Fouled. game is just drifting along too too casually for the likes of of of, of cavalier i think it's going to pick up one way or the other i really do think so anderson beckford webster Nice ball inside. Topi. Atkinson with the turn. Rochester will keep it in. Maybe the ball from Atkinson wasn't the best. There's the liver inside, easily handled there at the back. Just one man in the box there, and it was Webster. I think mean, this one too long. Yeah, I think he saw the three players at the back post and felt that's where he wanted to go. Didn't wrap around it enough. And despite me saying that it's just sambling along, it's just one goal in it, and, and, and Cavalier will continue to feel like they are still in it. There's still a better part of 17 minutes to go. That's what time will be added at the end. Hall trying to find Beckford on that occasion. Again, Jordan Fletcher is injured. Vital interception there from King. Green. Fletcher, back for the robbed by King again. Wally Downs making a few notes. Yeah, certainly not having his way in the second half as his, as his team had in the first half. not as comfortable as he would have liked. Although on that occasion he had nothing to write home about. <laughs> he thought of something but <laughs> felt it wasn't worth it. Possession stats largely in favor of Mount Pleasant. You can see why. Challenge from behind is called. Free kick to Cavalier just inside their own half. 
You got a bit of the ball, Hall. Coming from behind there. Maybe, yeah. Got a bit of Ming there as well, too. Yeah, that pass just needs a little more weight on it to get beyond the right fullback. In yeah, normal circumstances with Cavalier chasing a game, you'd see Webster on the ball a lot. It's pretty much gone central. And I think maybe he would be more effective in one of the wide positions, isolating players and running at them. But he has been deployed more centrally in the second half and I think that has taken away a bit from Cavalier attack. Here's Green. Fletcher's making a run. Green cuts inside. Finding Fletcher! Or it was Bedford, was it, who puts it into the goal, but the flag has gone up for offside. Which would have been disappointing because he would have seen right across the line. That would have been maybe have just been ball watching. But he didn't, he didn't complain. He seemed to remonstrate in any way to suggest that he felt that his run was perfect. So he might have known too that he was not disciplined in his in his act. We well, wouldn't be able to tell from this angle. Maybe Fletcher would have been, it would have been best served to allow Fletcher to run onto it. Because he seemed to have been coming from a deeper position. Yeah, good. Uh, well, I, w I was calling his name, wasn't I? <laughs> 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 Trying to bail yourself out. <laughs> Long day. And we have about 30 minutes to go, plus time added on for stoppages in this one. This is Jordan Fletcher. And the, ooh, that could have gone anywhere. Yeah. The deflected effort from Green. And if it was on goal, White had no chance. It was Rochester there who was in the way, I believe. Yeah, Rochester was the one and White was sitting on his backside when the deflection took place. So definitely if it was on target, it would have been three, go three to Mount Pleasant. Luckily for Cavalier, that went just wide. Corner kick at the near post, headed away. Thomas. Because of the injury sustained in the first half, these challenges are even having more severe impact on Thomas. You need those bands or, or bruises.
Don't have a lot of experience or attacking options on the bench. Well, he didn't have it at the start of the match, which is probably why he kept Dwayne Atkinson so close yeah, and beside him on the bench. Yeah, well, could be a ploy too, but he did play some youngsters, like I said, in the last game. But like I said, they didn't look like they were quite ready for this level. So I guess he was just trying to keep Atkinson to, to unleash in the latter parts of the game when the defenders might have have some heavy legs. But there we saw him gesticulating to Thomas, asking if he wanted to be substituted. There we see Coach Downs finding something to write home about. Uh, we see Harvey here. Caught by the studs there. Haven't seen a second half goal all day, Dwight. Well, that's well, still hope then for for Cavalier to get back into this one. Yeah. Or Mount Pleasant to extend oh their lead. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> so, yeah, there have been three games today to televise and even in that first game goal for Harborview came late in the second half Cavalier looking for that equalizer is there purpose in this attack it's Webster finding Ming story of the second half yeah every time Cavalier gets down the, the, the flank and try to play that cutback ball um, they find a, a, a blue shirt uh, so you, you, you give Mount Pleasant credit that their recovery runs and their position in the box on their defensive plays have been very good Corner kick delivered inside, and the heads go up, and a chance, and it's gathered on the line again. It's Leng inside the box, who had a, a couple of chances there, but really couldn't come up with anything significant to get by Shavon Sean Paul. And again, his header hit the back of Harvey, and then when he tried to follow up with it, came off his knee. But if Cavalier were not to get anything from this game, he's going to have sleepless nights. We saw him put in his shirt over his face. He may just sleep beneath the sheets, not wanting to see anything outside. He has had a hat-trick of chances, good chances. Well, in that... With that chance, he was just in the right place at the right time, but a couple of nibbles at it there with a couple of deflections wouldn't have helped his cause, but still. Yeah, he certainly would have wanted to finish that. We see the goal scorers for Mount Pleasant coming out in Bedford. And in comes Mills. Gary Mills, it looks like. Yes. Also, their skipper Richie. I see Ladale Richie coming on here. Coach Downs looking to just keep what he has here with about five minutes to go. Just bolstering the middle of the park there, just bringing on an extra central defender. Doxley is coming off. And one of the youngsters on now, Ainsworth, started the last game. Christopher Ainsworth for Cavalier. And he's just 
15 years old. They made two changes, didn't they, Cavalier? Yes, it appeared, yes, they did make two changes. Here's the second one, Joe McCleary is on. Confirm that Ainsworth came on for Ming. And McCleary came on for Doxley. Cavalier looking to get back into this game through their youngsters. They needed that oomph in the attacking third, Cavalier, in the second half. Referee says play on challenge coming in it did come and it did those changes confirm what you were saying earlier Donald because of probably a lack of uh, probably depth in the attacking third the, rel the reluctance to bring on or to make the changes as we see these changes are two very young players Mount Pleasant coming forward, the ball played through, that's wonderful for Green! That's game set and match, and Daniel Green has sealed the deal for Mount Pleasant. The third goal for the Ceylon based club. And I really do think that they deserve the three points. Fabulous stuff from Green. Yeah, fabulous play here. And we spoke about Green earlier. And the pass to Green was a peach as well. And Green, once he got onto it, just opened his body and finished to the far post. Lovely, lovely pass into Green. And you felt his first touch just set up. It touched it with his left and finished with his right. And he's quite happy with that. And why wouldn't he? It really was a good pass from Gary Mills. We've seen quite a few good assists <laughs> this afternoon and that was another peach of a ball from the middle of the park from the substitute who's just come on, Gary Mills. And that's effective use of the half spaces there. You know, when you make it into those positions, the centre of the wing back, they don't know who should go first. In fact, it cuts them out a lot of times. And on that occasion, Mills really, really executed well. I think Cavalier, they have a lot to think about as uh, we enter the latter stages of the first round. But Wally Downs will be pleased that his team has found form seemingly at the right time. They are now joined top of the league with this result. Just behind on goal difference. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a good sign for them, like I said, just got the, came off a loss and you felt so wobbly, green, first goal of the season, but you know, what I've seen of him so far, um, came on in a, in a game since that time has been starting and has been good value for Mount Pleasant, really has affected, affected the games in a positive way and I think today he has a good game as well. The goal that is the delivering side on which Sean Sean Paul has called for it. The goal that Beckford scored, um, it, it, it was set up by Fletcher. But if you remember, it was Green who picked out Fletcher with a pass from the outside in. And Fletcher, in, well, inadvertently, in the end, he, he gave that, that pass to Beckford. So Green has had a, a very good game so far. And I think he's right up there too with... with being player of the game. Alwyn Harvey as well for me in the holding midfield role for Mount Pleasant. Yeah, he has pretty much provided the, 
the impetus for this Mount Pleasant team to perform well today. I mean, they've dictated the pace all game long, played at their pace. Even when Cavalier is in possession, they have not been able to inject the, the usual life into the game. Mount Pleasant has been so good in terms of the pace and the possession, and Harvey has been instrumental to that. So, I mean, yeah, take your pick. <laughs> and, and and like I said, it's it's hard in a game you have three goal scorers. But like you said, Harvey has been instrumental in it, dictating the pace and stuff like that. Um I think he has been a class act in the middle, in the middle of the park. I really do. He's but but I do like I, I do like the work of, of Green and I tell you what, Donald, I, I'll, I'll pass it on to you. Oh, oh great! Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it so much. The reason why I'd probably strike down what Harvey has done because, well, I wouldn't say strike it down, but he's had a lot of space to operate it most times in the middle of the park. He was under. A little bit of pressure most of the game. So maybe in that situation, you expect a player given all that time and space to do to dominate and to dictate, right? Yeah, given to him. It's not like he was in a bustling midfield where he he was picking his spots and and and, and rolling players yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. So he had it easy. Yes, because of the way Mount Pleasant played early and pressed, but Cavalier also throughout this game just sat off. And, and and maybe that that, that makes his they made it is his work very easy. Um but I think for Green and and and, and Beckford and the likes of Fletcher, they were operating in tight spaces. I'm thinking of Fletcher. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking of Fletcher then. Has a goal and an assist. Yeah. At yeah. the end of the day, yes. back to basics. Back to basics, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can't lose with that. Can't lose with that. But 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 the fact that we are we are here deliberating over who should be man of the match with so many players from Mount Pleasant just pretty much epitomised how good their performance was today. Yeah, more than one of them came to the party, so to speak. Yeah. And. Uh, it was his first start joining Fletcher. Yes. And what an impact he made for his coach Wally Downs. A wonderful strike. And then an assist to Beckford. By the way, a change was made, made by Mount Pleasant, the final one, with Anderson coming off. Taji Anderson. Ball headed through, it's a chance for Cavalier. And it's put away by the substitute. McCleary. They've gotten a goal back. And it is Jerome McCleary who's on the score sheet. Looked across nervously to see if the flag would have gone up for offside. And that's not a bad finish. Not a bad finish at all. And they were looking at the goalkeeper saying that he didn't have to come because he... He helped McCleary make, make his mind up. But so often we've seen players look to play that chip over the top. And uh, they really go over the top. So you have to give him credit. It was only a consolation in the end though. Yep. Final score. 3-2 in favour of Mount Pleasant. Over Cavalier. That man started it off. And then provided an assist to that man there. Fletcher to Beckford.